I'm Christina with the Clean Energy Action, and we want to explain to you an important part of the energy market called the Electric Commodity Adjustment. The Electric Commodity Adjustment is about 30% of your Excel bill here in Colorado, and it's how fuel costs are passed on to consumers. So why do we care about the Electric Commodity Adjustment? We care because it creates a, a split incentive where those with the decision-making power are different from those who bear the consequences of those decisions. In the case of the electric commodity adjustment, the split incentive occurs when, because the utilities get to choose what fuel they get to use, and the consumers are, have the ones who bear, bear the cost of those decisions. So to illustrate this, imagine for a moment we live in a different world, similar to this one, but where there's only one car dealership and one kind of car. Imagine for a moment that you were told that you could only drive a Hummer. I'm looking for something to get me from point A to point B. What have you got for me? I think we've got just the thing. It's called a Hummer. It's a great sturdy vehicle that ought to get the job done. I think you will enjoy point B. Well, it looks nice, but do you have anything else? No. We're in the business of selling Hummers and business has been great. All of our customers are Hummer lovers, so why would we do anything else? Well, having no choice is frustrating, but... I guess I'll love my Hummer just like everyone else. Vroom, vroom. so much for gas. One day it's 3.30 and the next it's 4.50. Why gas prices fluctuate so much? I don't know. All I know is I'm about done dealing with the fluctuating myself. You know, the way I see it, there's one major problem here. The car dealership gets to choose what I drive, but I'm the one who has to pay for gas. And they don't care nothing what I'm paying. So what should we do? Give up our Hummers? Just stop cruising? Or we could avoid the gas prices entirely. What if we paid for Hummer and fuel, but the car dealership sells us transportation? That sounds like a good idea, all right? But what about the cost? You see, we'd be protected because we'd still be paying for the Hummer and the fuel. Just now they're lumped together at a set cost. Don't you think a stable price is better than having no security against the rising price of gas? That sounds like a much better way of purchasing transportation. A, a world, world where, where I know prices are steady! Now all we have to do is figure out how to get the Hummer and fuel sold together. Thanks for meeting with me today. What would you like to talk about? Well, I drive a Hummer. We, we drive, drive Hummers. Hummers. Well, of course you do, and so do I. And a fine vehicle it is. You see, we just worried because the cost of fuel has really been getting us down. What with all it's going up. And we have a solution. We want to pay for the price of the gas and the vehicle together. We want a contract saying that we can get our Hummer and our fuel at one consistent price. That way, the car dealership takes care of rising gas costs. So, we 
can protect consumers by having the car dealer buy the gas as well. That makes more sense to me. We can be protected from rising fuel prices by making them pay for the cost of fuel itself. Right! I hate driving my Hummer. Why they only provide Hummers, I just don't know. Maybe if we can get them to pay for the rising cost of gas, we'll find a solution to the costly product itself. And so, the community members were satisfied because they were protected from the rising prices of gas. And the representative was satisfied because he acted in the best interest of his constituents. Now, let's see how the Transportation Oversight Board and the car dealership respond to this new regulation. What will the new business model be? So, the laws have changed. We used to be able to offer any vehicle we wanted without thinking about the cost of fuel because the consumers pay those costs. But now we've been told that we have to bundle the vehicle and the fuel together into one transportation service. So there's two ways that we can do that. Either we can continue offering the Hummer, which we've always offered, um, but we'll have to charge people three times as much to protect our business from the possibility of rising fuel costs. Or we can pick a much more efficient vehicle that uses a lot less fuel and then you know, the cost won't be as sensitive to future fuel prices. But we can make money doing either of these. Hmm, that sounds really, really good. I don't know, you know if my eyes received me with this one, Hank, but really this just sounds like a great idea to be able to offer the same services without having to charge three times as much. Um, which, you know, that really does align with our goals here at the Transportation Oversight Committee as well. So, since option two seems like it's going to provide people the cheapest services, I approve option two. Yeah! And so, everyone realized that the best way to avoid the volatile gas prices was to change the way that we pay for it. So the service providers are the ones responsible for the, for the changing costs. So let's see how this is analogous to the changes that we're calling for in our energy market. So, when it comes to buying energy, the car dealership is like the utilities company, and the Hummer is like a power plant. The utilities company doesn't lose money whether the price of fuel goes up or down, just like the car dealership's bottom line doesn't change when gas prices do. Finally, it's the job for the Public Utilities Commission played here by the Transportation Oversight Committee to make sure that the smartest and least expensive energy purchasing, energy purchasing choices are made for their consumers. For more information, visit our website at cleanenergyaction.org.